Hi, I'm Joe Scott, President and CEO of Jersey City Medical Center. Welcome to the Medical Center Show. This week we have a very exciting guest, our Director of Vascular and Endovascular Services, Dr. Mike Curry. We'll be right back. Newport, the luxury waterfront community on the Hudson River, offers a quality of life you deserve in 10 high-rise rental towers with amenities such as the on-site Newport Path Subway, light rail and ferry service, Newport Town Square, three playgrounds, dog run, upscale restaurants, retail giants like Sears, JCPenney, Macy's, and Target. Morton Williams Supermarket is just outside your front door. A health and fitness club, spa, skating rink, and medical facilities are also on site. NewportNJ.com Enjoy the New York skyline from Newport Town Square. Manhattan is just one path stop away or a quick ride through the Holland Tunnel. Nursery and private elementary schools all on site. 12 screen movie theater at the Newport Center Mall. Want to visit Newport? Stay at the Western or Marriott Hotel. Go to NewportNJ.com for details. Newport has luxurious towers, great restaurants, shopping, New York skyline views, schools, playgrounds, a marina and yacht club, gym, spa, fine wine, fine living. It's incredible. It's you. NewportNJ.com. Newport. Live like you want. Seeing the ER doctor at the Jersey City Medical Center has never been easier. If you're sick, you just click. Go to LibertyHealth.org and here's how it works. Click Skip the Wait. Select your time and check in now. Enter your symptoms, your personal information. Click Proceed to Confirmation. And the doctor's waiting for you. The Jersey City Medical Center. Make Hudson County's number one hospital your first choice. Hi, welcome back to the Medical Center Show. Dr. Curry, welcome. We're so glad that you're here with us this week. It's a pleasure so, to be here. Tell us a little bit about yourself, your education, training. Tell us uh, what, how a vascular surgeon gets trained. Sure. Um, so I'm originally from New Jersey. Okay. Uh, I went to medical school at New Jersey Medical School in Newark. Great. And then I did uh, my general surgery training at the University of Chicago, and that was seven years in Chicago. I spent two years doing uh, advanced research in uh, genetically modified bypass grafts to try to prevent the long-term problems associated with doing bypasses. So, so just back up for a minute, because people don't understand what bypass means. So you're a vascular surgeon. You work on the vasculature, exactly. right? You, you actually so operate on the circulation. That's right. So when you say bypass, you're bypassing veins, or what's? Exactly. So there, there's um, the, the, the biggest problem that we deal with is something called peripheral arterial disease. Okay. And that is blockages in the arteries of the peripheral arteries. All and right. by peripheral arteries, we mean all the arteries in the body except for those on the heart. On the heart. Okay. Those are called the coronary arteries, and those are the heart surgeons that deal with those. Okay. And so, as so a vascular surgeon, so you did surgeon, research on this, on how to kind of bypass where there might be a problem. That's right. Okay. And so, uh, one of the standard treatments for treating the blockages in the arteries is to a do a bypass. You take a vein out of the leg, just right. like for a heart bypass, and you, you turn it around and you, you use it for a bypass in the leg to get better circulation down to the lower portion of the leg. Wow. And one of the problems with that is that the vein is accustomed to low flow, and when you put it into an arterial system, uh, oh, it, it has some changes that occur, right. and uh, over time, some of those changes can cause the bypass to fail years out um, after the bypass. Okay. And so to try to figure out how to fix that, we were looking at genetic uh, modification. So you were trained in general surgery? General and surgery then you at did University two years of, of research on this vascular bypass surgery? Correct. Wow, and then, then what did you do? And then uh, after my general surgery training, I spent a year at Washington University in St. Louis. Okay. And I did a one-year specialized fellowship in vascular and endovascular surgery. Wow. And while I was there, I was fortunate enough to train with a gentleman by the name of Juan Perotti, mm -hmm. who invented the aortic stent graft, wow. which has revolutionized 
all of vascular surgery and uh, makes it a lot easier for patients to have repair of things like aneurysms and blockages uh, by doing minimally invasive surgery through catheter-based technologies rather than open bypass surgery. So you came back to New Jersey how long ago? So I've been back in New Jersey for almost three years. Three years. And you started at UMDNJ, and then we actually, I think we met on the golf course and started <laughs> talking about, hey, why don't you come to Jersey City Medical Center? Yeah, so I, uh, I came as the director of um, uh, the vascular surgery division at New Jersey Medical School. Right. And um, after we met, uh, it, it was apparent that, you know, we might be able to offer some services at Jersey City Medical Center that would advance the care of uh, patients with vascular diseases right and so we've been doing that for uh, coming up on a year now Wow that's great so let's go back to talk about what you do so sure. you actually take these tiny veins and you kind of like sew them together right I mean Correct. That's, that's, I know that that's kind of simple but uh, to be able to do that is kind of amazing how you use microscopes I mean how, so how does that how does that work I mean for it, somebody who has not any idea about kind of what you do so it's, it's technically challenging and right. there's uh, obviously a lot of preparation that goes right. into it and you know a lot of the decisions that you make of how you're going to do uh, any sort of reconstruction uh, is actually done you know those decisions are made before you get in the operating room. Inside the operating room, the technical aspects of how you do the bypass or how you clean an artery out or right. how you put a stent in um, are obviously very challenging. And that's why you spend eight years of training after four years of medical school wow. so that you can uh, be able to do this kind of thing. So four years of medical school, eight years of training, you did the research, and now you're back as a director. That's really, I mean, that kind of expertise really differentiates Jersey City Medical Center when it comes to the kind of surgeries that you make. Correct. That you There's there's actually not a lot of board certified vascular surgeons. In fact, there's um, just slightly over a thousand board certified vascular surgeons in the entire country. Mm -hmm. And uh, so there's not, uh, there's not actually very many in all of Hudson County. I think there's probably about four or five. So when would a patient come to see you? Sometimes you're involved in traumas, obviously, in our trauma center. But electively, patients come to you from referrals? I mean, what, what, what are usually their chief complaints? Sure, uh, you know, patients usually see their primary doctor with mm -hmm. a complaint of a uh, pain in their leg when they walk. Okay. That's something called, called uh, claudication. All right. And typically it's a calf tightening that people experience when they walk a certain distance. Okay. And they rest, the, the pain goes away, they start walking again, it comes back. So that's like a cramping pain. Sometimes? Exactly. Oh, it is. Exactly. Okay. And it's um, and it can be debilitating, and it can keep people from from being active. Right. And it's usually a blockage in one of the arteries leading to the legs. Right. And so. Um, you know, a primary doctor will then pick up on this by the patient may not have pulses that they could feel in the foot. Oh, I see. And then they send them to us and okay. we do the uh, advanced vascular testing at the new vascular lab at the hospital. Right. And we're able to figure out with non-invasive, no, you know, pokes or no surgery. So is it like an ultras on? ultrasound machine that you use? Exactly. That, okay. So ultrasound and uh, physiologic testing, which means we're actually measuring blood pressure down at the ankle, comparing it to blood pressure in the arm and you oh, can get a good idea of what kind of circulation deficit there is. How long does that test usually take? Just a few minutes. So if somebody's really complaining of cramping their legs after they're walking, they go to their doctor, they really should have this diagnostic test. It's pretty simple, Correct. doesn't require any injections or anything and everything can be done. That's right. Peripherally. It's called an ankle brachial index or ABI. An ABI. That's okay, right. great, good. Um, What's always fascinates me about what you guys do is that you know, like you have to. I mean, do you use like microscopes and stuff to be able to see? Because you're you're taking these tiny veins, right, and yeah. sewing them back together again. And yeah, we we actually have uh, glasses that have microscopes on them, so oh, wow. they're they're called loops. Right. Um, and so the little microscopes are on the glasses, so that you can look above the microscope portion or look through the microscope por okay. portion. And when we're sewing. Uh, we're using uh, suture that is barely visible with the naked eye. Mm -hmm. And so obviously with the microscope it makes it a lot easier and your motions are very small and right. delicate and um, you know. So do they teaser. ever pop sometimes? I mean after you put them on is that is something you have to worry about? I mean. <laughs> it, it's something that we spend a lot of time worrying right? about yeah. and we um, you know. But it sounds like you do a really great job we, of making sure that doesn't happen. We tend to think we're happen. pretty good at it. Okay. And, uh, That's great. Good. 
Uh, we'll be right back with Dr. Mike Curry. We're going to talk a little bit about trauma and some of the things you might see in our trauma center. And you talked about endovascular, so we'd like to explore that a little bit more. Sure. Thanks. Jersey City Medical Center, Hudson County's number one hospital, as ranked by U.S. News and World Report. Hudson County's only hospital to receive an A safety score rating. Jersey City Medical Center is Hudson County's only hospital to receive the prestigious Magnet Award for Nursing Excellence. Make the number one hospital in Hudson County your first choice for quality health care. Jersey City Medical Center. Visit us on the web at libertyhealth.org. Jersey City Medical Center, Hudson County's number one hospital as ranked by the U.S. News and World Report. Why? Because of its patient care, not its bottom line. Jersey City Medical Center, for patients, not for profit. The Jersey City Medical Center accepts all patients and most insurance. At the Jersey City Medical Center, your health is our concern, not our bottom line. Make Hudson County's number one hospital your first choice. The Jersey City Medical Center, for patients, not for profit. Visit us on the web at libertyhealth.org. Welcome back. We're here with Dr. Mike Curry, the Director of Vascular and Endovascular Services at Jersey City Medical Center. So we were talking a little bit about some of the vascular procedures you do in the legs. Um, what are some other areas of concern that people should have relative to vascular services? Well, one of the most common things that we deal with are blockages in the carotid arteries. Okay. The carotid arteries are the arteries, the main blood flow that brings circulation to the brain. Okay, so like the... Correct, in, in the front neck. of the okay. neck, okay. the one on either side. All right. And um, it's one of the most common arteries to develop plaque, okay. blockage. And How come? Is it just because well, of where they it, are? Yeah, right about here, mm -hmm. the carotid artery splits to oh. the internal artery, which goes up to the brain, and right. the external carotid artery, which goes out to the face. Okay. And at that split, the blood kind of swirls a little bit because oh. there's a, what's called a bifurcation. Okay. And those hemodynamic properties, those stresses on the wall of the artery, cause that artery to, to change. Oh. And with time, people with high blood pressure, right. people who smoke, mm -hmm. high cholesterol, diabetes, these are all risk factors for the development of plaque at that bifurcation. Okay. And if you develop a plaque there, um, then that puts you at risk for a stroke. Okay. And as you know, a stroke can be either um, life ending right. or life altering sure. because if you don't get enough blood flow to your brain, part of that brain can die and cause you to be paralyzed in one part of your body or potentially kill you. Sure. And in fact, I think this is National Stroke Week, so it's important we have this conversation. So what do you do for people who have you know, that kind of blockage? So <clears throat> that's uh, a blockage that we could also pick up with a simple ultrasound. Oh, okay. And so it's an easy test to do that uh, requires no you know, injection of any sort. And uh, just by placing an ultrasound probe in the neck, looking for the blockage, we can tell how severe the blockage is. Okay. And uh, just because someone has a blockage doesn't mean they need anything done because it doesn't represent a risk for stroke until the blockage gets over 70%. Oh, I see. Now, if and some, you can tell that from the ultrasound. Correct, wow. and just like uh, just like a garden hose, where you narrow the mm -hmm. en the exit of the water, right. and the the water comes out faster. Right. We measure the velocity of the blood flow through that area, and okay. that tells us how narrow that oh, that, I see. that uh, blood vessel is. Wow, that's pretty sophisticated. It is sophisticated, and there's a lot of obviously advanced training that's required. And um, our vascular lab that we've recently set up mm -hmm. is uh, specialized in looking at just vascular. Wow diseases and um, picking up on the subtle differences that may make a difference as to whether or not you might want to treat somebody or not. Okay. So then what do you do? So, now? well, if they have a blockage that requires treatment, either because they have symptoms mm -hmm. or because it's a severe narrowing, uh, there are two options. One is to clean out the artery with a um, small surgical procedure called the carotid endarterectomy. Okay. And uh, that's been an operation that's been around for about 50 years. Um, and has fantastic results. It reduces the risk of stroke in patients who have severe blockages and uh, can potentially save someone's life. Wow. Been very well studied. We know how uh, well it does, and it's an easy operation to tolerate. People go home the next day. Really? And, but you do cut their neck and... Correct. And, yeah. uh, and sometimes people require general anesthesia. They go to right. sleep. Some people, actually, we could do it with them awake if they're wow. the, the patient that can tolerate that kind mm -hmm. of thing. And they do what's called a block, right. make everything numb in the neck. But in certain types of patients where... So let me ask you, is it better to be asleep or awake, or is it just patient preference? It's typically patient preference yeah. because... Okay. Um, 
you know, we're comfortable doing it both ways. Right. I like the patient to be comfortable and doing right. something that they're comfortable with. Okay. Um, so the, uh, the other option, obviously, for patients who, for one reason or another, can't have that surgical procedure because they might have a scar on their neck, they've had radiation to the neck for some other reason, the blockage may be high above the bifurcation, mm -hmm. or they may just be too sick to undergo a surgical procedure, we can put a stent there that is also uh, a very good option for the patient and will also reduce the risk of stroke. Okay, so when you put the stent in, do you still have to cut them or no? no? Oh, that's a different that's a, procedure. That's just okay. a needle poke in through the groin. Okay. And we travel with our wires inside the vessels all the way up into the neck from the groin. Wow. And uh, angioplasty the uh, artery by putting a balloon in. That means to open the artery okay. by dilating a balloon that has a stent and the stent stays, the balloon comes out. Wow. And to do that safely, we put a little device in that would capture any debris that might come okay. out. So it's actually, as you put the stent in, if something falls out, you're actually like sucking it back? That's right, wow. it either gets captured in a basket or it comes back down in our catheter. Um, there's different ways to do it. Uh, wow, that, but that increases the safety of the procedure. Sure. So you actually start in the groin and go all the way. How do you visualize that? That's so that's all just done under X-ray guidance called really? fluoroscopy. Right. And um, it's a you know these are procedures that we're doing all over the body. You might have a blockage in the arm, in your intestinal artery, in your kidney artery, in your leg artery. Typically, we go from the groin for all of those types of procedures wow. with a needle poke right. and no surgical procedure, and are able to, um, you know, treat the problem without having to open the patient. Wow, that's pretty amazing. So, do patients go home the same day for that kind of procedure, or it, do it, they or overnight, or what's it, it depends on mm -hmm. if it's a if it's a carotid procedure, we usually right. keep them one night to watch them. Right. Uh, but for most people who are having their legs treated with stents and angioplasty, they go home the same day. Wow, that's pretty amazing. And so do all vascular surgeons do that endovascular work or you had special training to do it? Or? Yeah, that's, uh, it, it's becoming more common, but m these days, in fact, the majority of vascular surgeons do not. Right. Um, but as you know, people are being Coming trained in the new uh, mm -hmm. techniques, then more and more of us are. Wow, and you can do all these procedures at the medical center. Correct. Yeah, we have Correct. the equipment and everything else to be able to to funnel this thing from your groin all the way through your body up to your neck, take that thing out and be done with it. That's pretty amazing. Yeah, the, the that, technology has gotten great. The procedures are getting better and better <clears throat> right. uh, with time and uh, patients are really benefiting. Right. Now, in addition to you covering our hospital, you have a couple of other doctors who work with you, Correct. right? Correct. Um, so my, my partner at the medical school, we uh, cover Jersey City Medical Center and uh, we spend time here okay. um, both covering call and doing elective procedures as right. well. Right. How, how would somebody know, for example, that they might have a blocked carotid? Would, would they have certain symptoms or? So that's a great question. The most common symptom that someone might have is something um, that they may not realize that it's a problem with their, their artery. It's actually a vision problem, something oh. called amaurosis fugax. Okay. Funny name right. for um, a darkening of vision in just one eye. Oh. So if they're having problems with both eyes, it's typically not that, but right. if, if they get a darkening, almost like a shade coming down over one eye, right. then it might be a sign that a little piece of plaque broke off and went to the, the first branch of the internal carotid artery oh. is the ophthalmic artery going to the eye, okay. and that's why that could be a good sign. Right. The other thing would be is if you ever get numbness or tingling in any part of your body, or if you have a change in your speech, these are signs of, of potential of, right. impending stroke. Right. So if someone does have this, can't figure out why one of their eyes is, seems to be shaded, or so do you actually lose vision, or is it just? Temporarily, yeah, they get a, really? a complete loss of vision in that one eye. Wow. Um, and you know, a lot of times we actually get referred to these patients by ophthalmologists, by eye doctors. Really? Um, or by a primary care doctor right. who's a good primary care doctor who picks up on these kind of things. Yeah. It's the same thing like with an aneurysm. A primary care doctor who may be feeling the belly can pick up on a pulsatile mass where the aorta is easy to feel wow. when it's not typically. That may mean, mean that the aorta has grown into an aneurysm. Right. And that primary care doctor, by sending that patient to us to, to treat, may have just saved that patient's life because if that aneurysm ruptures, right. they have about a 90% mortality. Wow. So, we so like those are major vascular procedures major vascular that we'll procedures. do. Okay, well, we'll be right back. We're gonna talk a little bit about the trauma center and those major vascular procedures when we come back. Sure. Thanks. It takes more than a state-of-the-art medical facility to make a great hospital. It takes a team of dedicated medical professionals 
That's the Jersey City Medical Center, Hudson County's number one hospital. Medical teams consisting of New Jersey's top doctors, magnet award-winning nurses, and accomplished hospital associates, all committed to your good health. That's what you have at the Jersey City Medical Center. Make Hudson County's number one hospital your first choice. The Jersey City Medical Center, on the web at libertyhealth.org. Panapinto Properties, Jersey City. Shaping the workplace with state-of-the-art office space and an address your company desires. Building residences that define your home environment. Adjacent to all modes of transportation. On-site parking available. The right address, the right lease. 201-521-9000 or visit on the web at panapintoproperties.com. Panapinto Properties, building Jersey City for everyone. Welcome back. We're here with Dr. Mike Curry, who is the chief of our vascular and endovascular services. So we left off talking about, so you talked a little bit about peripheral vascular disease, maybe using some stents and doing things endovascularly. Um, and then we talked about the carotid. Um, and certainly people who have any kind of high blood pressure or are worried about those kinds of things should talk to their primary care doctor and get those tests, those really minimally invasive tests. But you also do trauma, so because we're the major trauma center for our region. Tell us a little bit about some of the things you see there, because that's major surgery, right? Sure. Yeah. Sure, yeah. Unfortunately, you know, the blood vessels are one of the um, delicate parts of the body that can be injured in a trauma, whether it be, um, you know, a car accident or, you know, a violent crime. Right. Um, we see a lot of vascular injuries, and we work very closely with the trauma surgeons uh, to treat these uh, injuries. Um, and these days there are both open surgical procedures and endovascular procedures we can do to um, fix traumatic uh, vessel injuries. Mm -hmm. um, one of the most common of which is actually in a, in a patient who's in a car accident, that sudden deceleration when the car stops can result in an aortic tear wow. uh, in the chest. And uh, in the past we had to um, open the patient's chest um, and do a major surgical procedure to treat so that. So actually cut their sternum and... Actually for that, sometimes right. you'd either have to go through the chest in the front or even split them open sideways wow. through the side of the chest. Wow. And that's, uh, you know, that's a major surgery with multiple complications uh, related to the actual surgical procedure um, that these days we're able to avoid by doing an endovascular repair of the aorta. Mm -hmm. And uh, again, we go in through the groin and that tear of the thoracic aorta can be treated oftentimes with a stent graft by going in through the groin, putting the catheter up and deploying a graft inside the artery wow. and uh, typically saving someone's life from, from bleeding to death. Have we had those kinds of cases at the medical center? Uh, those kinds of cases unfortunately are not that um, rare and so um, we've been able to treat patients with uh, aortic disease using endovascular therapies over the past year at the at the uh, medical center. Wow! Anything remarkable about any of those patients that? that uh... Well, I'll tell you. You know, one of the one of the most remarkable uh, cases that I've been involved with at the medical center um, wasn't just a straightforward vascular uh, injury, but it was actually a, a combination of treatments using uh, plastic surgery, trauma surgery, urology, general surgery, and vascular surgery. Wow! Um, in a crush injury. Um, and we were able to save a uh, young man's uh, leg uh, that was crushed. So he, he was, is this the guy, he was working on the path station, right? And didn't, and something happened? I, I think he was crushed in between yeah. some trains. I don't mm -hmm. know that it was at the yeah, path station, right. but it was, um, it was a bad, bad injury. Bad crushing injury. Yeah, that um, in the past uh, for sure would have resulted in, in loss of a limb right. and potentially life. Yeah. And um, through incredible heroic effort of the entire hospital system, uh, we were able to save his life and leg. And, um, you know, I was really you know, happy to see him wow. walking recently. And really? Yeah, well, that's great. That's see, that's, that's really gratifying that, that we have the, that kind of the ability to do those kinds of things. Yeah. Um, sometimes patients come into the hospital with um, like an, an aneurysm, mm -hmm. so and you treat you, you would be the major treatment for that. Yes, right? and, and in fact, actually, uh, because of some of the specialized services that we offer, we've.